excited to be here this afternoon. I spend most of my time talking to technologists and at technology conferences, and it's um, really exciting to be on the use case side and seeing so much about Papua New Guinea that I really had no idea about. Um, so thank you for having me here. And thank you, Andrew, for inviting us along. Uh, we are a technology company. Um, and I will make a promise off the, you know, the, the bat that my background is in law and politics and we are in the innovation space, yes, but it also is 5 p.m. So I promise I will not talk about the technology too deeply. Um, and the technology we're talking about today is blockchain. Um, like anything new and exciting, there's a lot of hype around blockchain um, and it was related to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and us all kind of making our fortunes and retiring. So I would actually say there's a lot of overhype around blockchain. Um, for what is essentially a database technology, there's uh, been quite a few headlines over the past few years. So um, I think that there's a, there's a really famous saying about technologies that, that should either be beautiful or invisible. Um, blockchain yet is neither of those. So it's still in its very early stages. One of the things that we talk about a lot as well when we're looking at blockchain, um, for most of us, it's kind of like the internet. We don't really need to know how it works, but we want to know what we can do with it. So I'm not going to explain what blockchain is today, but I am going to explain how blockchain is being used in Papua New Guinea. Um, we started on this journey as part of a company called AgriDigital, and AgriDigital is still in, in market. It's an Australian tech company. Um, we first started experimenting with blockchain out in Dubbo, you go out to Dubbo and you tell people that they're running world first um, pilots using blockchain and they just stare at you blankly and they don't really um, have any idea what you're talking about. And there's a few blank faces here when I say blockchain is being used in Papua New Guinea, but it is. Um, and it's a really exciting project that we've been really fortunate to be part of this year. So I'm going to share some of that this morning, or well, this afternoon, sorry, the very afternoon. Um, okay, so blockchain in agriculture, why are we looking at this technology in ag? Um, it's very rare that agriculture is heralded as kind of the first great use case for a technology. It's kind of famously the least digitized industry globally. Uh, and, and any conference uh, where they've been talking about blockchain over the past few years, whether it's the keynote speech or one of the very early sessions in the day, someone raises agriculture as the best use case for this. Why, Why is that the, the fact? Um, that's because we're talking about naturally distributed networks of people who don't necessarily trust each other, needing access to the same set of information around a common asset. And that's essentially how you could describe a blockchain as well, um, as a data layer. So we're talking about sharing data or records of information between parties who don't have to trust each other, but instead the trust is embedded into the algorithms and the way that the data is stored itself. That's as technical as we're going to get. I hope that's OK with everyone. Uh, so what are we doing at Giora? Uh, Giora is the outcome of AgriDigital's piloting in this space over the past few years. We've worked with the big guys like Rabobank and CBH Group and a few other big agribusinesses in Australia. And we're now opening up our technology in a foundation, trying to make it as widely accessible at really low cost to the entire agricultural industry. Um, and we believe that that's the, the future of this network-based technology is low-cost digital infrastructure. Um, the, the Giora protocol is essentially a tool for different agribusinesses and ag tech companies to create digital records of physical commodities. Uh, we integrate with different platforms, devices, Internet of Things to allow that, that record to be made really data-rich and accurate. And then we provide our users with a mechanism for sharing that securely between parties. That's basically how it works. So as part of this project, uh, PNG Pigs, um, this was driven by the United Nations Food and Ag Organization in partnership with a company called Switch Maven. They're a mobile application developer. Uh, and we were working with the government in Papua New Guinea and the United Nations International Telecommunication Union. So it was a big combined project. Um, there, it was part of an, an overall goal of the United Nations Food and Ag Organization to build a regional livestock traceability solution throughout Asia Pacific. And uh, PNG and pig farmers in the Joaka province were the first place for this project to go live. So we're really excited to be um, doing that in partnership with PNG. 
Uh, there are 1.8 million pigs in PNG, approximately, um, and I think we'll start to get some better tracking of that, hopefully, through this project. And the key objective of the project was to create a digital record system uh, for pig farmers to have a simple tool to create records of their pigs. And the reason that we wanted to do that is to give them a way of proving out the value of their pigs, particularly where they're creating a value added pro product and to protect against fraud when they go to market. So we kind of, we face fraud and adulteration across a whole range of agri supply chains, but uh, it's definitely still something that's pretty uh, ripe in PNG. Is anyone at farm pigs here? Is anyone a farmer here? Okay. <laughs> oh, we're going into it. Perfect. Okay. Um, so you would know everything of what we're talking about just here. Um, okay, so I'll just go really quickly into the innovation process, considering we're in the innovative space. Um, we set ourselves that objective that I mentioned earlier, so giving farmers this tool, a digital tool, to prove out their product, particularly where they were creating a value or a premium product. Uh, we look at the strengths of the, the, the use case when we were going to do this. One of the strengths... And, and um, I know we've, there's definitely some challenges still with internet access, but one of the strengths in PNG was actually mobile phone adoption and internet access across some of the farmers we were working with. And also the geography for rollout. We traditionally work in Australian farming and uh, you have to travel a little further between farms uh, in outback Australia. Uh, some of the challenges though in, in creating this product were around technical capabilities and also the cost of technology. So we wanted to create a really low cost, easy to use technology using Android mobile phones uh, that could be uh, used and picked up and within about 30 seconds someone start uh, using this data digital record tool. So uh, you can see here kind of the process of what we wanted to be capturing. Um, the, the farmer would be able to create a scaffold for starting to record information around their pigs. Uh, we would store that in a really secure data layer, so that's the blockchain part. Um, and then over the course of the pig's life, they would be able to add extra information about the pig so that when they take this pig to market, they can take the physical pig along with the digital pig to prove out its history. Those are a really big challenge straight off the bat of how do we know that this physical pig is the digital pig? Um, and that is a really big challenge. And there is some interesting research actually on happening at UNSW at the moment where they're doing facial recognition technology for pigs. <laughs> <laughs> We're not quite there yet, but we started with a really simple RFID tag in the pig's ear. Um, so what did we build? Uh, in partnership with Switch Maven, we built this really simple app where the farmer could scan the RFID tag in the pig's ear and then attach photos and information about this pig. Now that data is all time stamped, so we record exactly the moment and the author of that information. It's logged into the blockchain layer, and then over the course of the life, this data could be added. One of the key things about a blockchain is you can't take any data away and you can't change anything in the history. It only allows you to add new information. So it's a really good and secure tool for this kind of use case. Um, you can see this is some of our technical team rolling out the application. Um, and there's a pig. We actually arrived there and no one really knew how to put the RFID tags in the pig's ears. So we had our developers learning how, our software engineers, learning how to um, put these little RFID tags in. Um, but it was, a, it was a really exciting project for us. We actually had some of our technical team uh, going over and in partnership with the government of PNG running a training program. The objective of this entire project is essentially to hand over the technology and upskill uh, local software engineers to continue running and, and growing this product. Um, and we just continue to provide operational support uh, from Australia. Uh, but there's already plans for expansion. So not only we have now a digital record, but we're looking at ways to grow this out to actually have a digital marketplace so you can have better and more secure payment terms for those pigs. Um, uh, the, what else have I got for our expansion plan? The access to real-time finance, and we won't go into the details of that. 
Uh, but it's essentially the ability to use this record of a pig as collateral to receive access to finance. So farmers that previously didn't really have anything to show a financier um, as a valuable asset now have this uh, pig, which is essentially an independently verified valuable asset to access finance. We're also looking at expansion into other commodities. As part of the week-long training program, we actually had local developers building out a very similar application for coffee um, within a week. So there's some really exciting expansion opportunities. And as I mentioned, it's part of a larger regional project. So PNG is really leading the way there um, for regional expansion. So um, please come and grab me after. We work in a number of other industries as well um, in both Australia and across Asia Pacific and really happy to chat more about the project. Thanks.